Hey gang, just to let you know, you can now use the promo code MTGMUDSTA, all caps, at FlipsideGaming.com and OriginalMagicArt.store. Using the code gets you 10% off orders $10 or more, and you get to help out the channel at the same time. We are back with another game filled at MagicFest slash GP New Jersey. I kind of like how the system is working, with me posting one of these games on Monday and a normal game on Thursdays, so we'll do this until I run out. Today's game features the triumphant return of Kai, playing his Ludovic and Sidar Kondo deck, keeping Swords to Plowshares, Village Bellringer, Den Protector, Druid's Repository, Stomping Grounds, Carplusion Forest, and Breeding Pool. Brayden is back, playing Doretti, and hopefully won't die on turn 3, keeping 3 Mountains, a Roar Coal Engine, Bogart and Hellkite, Mycosynth Wellspring, and a Rude Medallion. Kai's buddy Mike is playing Edgar Markov, keeping Kai's Wrath, Captivating Vampire, Tithe Drinker, Knight's Whisper, Swamp, Mountain, and Command Tower. And last but not least, new to the channel, is Brion playing his Azoni deck, keeping Mazarik Kral Death Priest, a Swamp, a Forest, Skull Clamp, Poison Tip Archer, Stingweed Imp, and Dodd and Treader Elk. Brion wins the die roll and starts us off. Brion plays a Forest, and he casts Skull Clamp, passing a Kai. Kai plays a Temple Garden, taking two to have it come in untapped and passing. Brayden plays a mountain, and passes. Mike plays a command tower, and passes. Brion plays a swamp, and he casts a Dawn Treader Elk. Kai plays a breeding pool, and continues the pain train. He takes two as it comes in untapped, and he casts a normal den protector like some kind of madman, passing to Brayden. Brayden plays a mountain, and he casts Ruby Medallion. Mike plays a plains, and casts Tithe Drinker. He gains a vampire token from Edgar Markov's ability, and he passes. Brion draws for turn, and isn't too keen on the card. He clamps the Dawn Treader Elk before activating its ability, getting to draw two cards, and then going to find a basic for the field. He grabs a Swamp for the field, and then plays a Golgari Rot Farm to bounce a basic back to his hand. Moving to his end step, he has to discard Masaryk to his graveyard and pass it to Kai. Kai plays a Stomping Ground, taking another two to bring his self-inflicted life total loss to six for the game. He casts a Druid's Repository, and moves to combat. He swings the Den Protector at Brion, and puts a counter on it before dealing two. Brayden plays a Mountain, and brings out Doretti. He then upticks Doretti, discarding two and drawing two before passing. Mike plays a Swamp, and out comes Drana, Liberator of Malakir, along with a Vampire token from Edgar Markov. Mike then moves to combat, and swings the Tithe Drinker and earlier made token at Doretti for three. Brion plays a Swamp for his turn, and he casts Blood Artist. He then drops a Stinkweed Imp, and passes to Kai. Kai plays a Steam Vents, bringing his self-inflicted life loss up to 8. We then see a Concordant Crossroads, and removing the counter from the repository, Kai casts a Fiend Hunter. With the Hunter hitting the field, he exiles Drana, which is pretty thematic. Kai then moves to combat, and hits Brayden for 2, and Mike for 1, gaining 2 counters on the repository. Brayden plays a Mountain, and he casts an Ingot Chewer, which typically is evoked. He blows up Brion's Skull Clamp, and has a blocker this time around, passing to Mike. Mike plays a Mountain, and casts Captivating Vampire. This gets him his third token, and activating the Captivating Vampire's ability by tapping five vampires, Mike targets Brion's Blood Artist, because Mike feels like he'll be more at home and his side of the board. Kai isn't a fan of this, and removes a counter from the repository to cast Swords to Plowshares, and exiles the Blood Artist. Brion draws for turn, and drops a Poison Tip Archer. He then plays a Blighted Woodlands, and moves to combat. As all of his creatures now have haste thanks to Kai, Brion is able to swing the Poison Tip Archer at Mike for two, and he passes. Kai finally plays a land that doesn't hurt him, with a Glacial Fortress. He then casts Ludovic in his main phase, and moves to combat. He swings everything at Mike for four total damage, and gains three counters on his repository. Kai then passes to Brayden, and draws at the end of his turn from the Ludwig trigger. Brayden draws for turn, and drops another mountain. He casts a Mike Synth Wellspring, finding a basic as it enters, and putting it to hand. He then does the old switcheroo, down ticking Doretti, to swap the Wellspring for the Worm Coil Engine, and grabs a second basic. Moving to combat, Brayden also swings at Mike with his Worm Coil Engine, dealing 6 and gaining 6. He then moves to his end of turn, drawing from Kai's Ludwig trigger. Mike draws for turn, and casts Kalatus Traitor of Get in his main phase, gaining another vampire token. He then taps five vampires in his main phase to steal Brayden's Wormcoil engine, and moves to combat. 
Before moving to declare attackers, Kai flashes in a village bell ringer to dissuade Mike from attacking him. Mike then swings the tithe drinker of Brayden, who blocks with his ingot chewer. The chewer and drinker trade, but we make a small mistake with combat math on the tithe drinker's part. The chewer is exiled though instead of dying, and Mike makes a 2 2 zombie. Brion casts Bontu in his main phase because no one will swing at him with a stinkweed imp out, and he really wants it to go to his graveyard. At this point, Mike realizes the tithe drinker should be dead, and bins him. With it dying, each of Brion's opponents should have taken one from the archer, which they then correct eventually. Kai falls back to his old habits, playing a bloodstained mire, and taking one to crack it and go find a land. He grabs a cinder glade, and he moves to combat. He swings the village bell ringer at Brayden for one, and gains a counter on his repository. Kai then passes, and at the end of turn draws from his Ludovic trigger. Brayden draws for turn and plays a mountain. He pays only six since the medallion reduces the cost of the tyrant familiar's cost by one, and the dragon comes into play. He swings it at Mike, using the familiar's trigger to kill the captivating vampire. This has the poison tip archer trigger, dealing one to Brion's opponents, and Mike then takes seven from the dragon. In Brayden's second main phase, he upticks to ready, discarding two more cards, and drawing two more. Moving to his end step, Brayden draws a card from the Ludwig trigger. Mike untaps and draws for turn. He plays a Scoured Barons, gaining the life after taking all those hits. Moving to combat, Mike decides to go on the offensive, and swings everything he has at Brayden. He deals 15 damage and gains 9 life from his lifelinkers. I finally wander back over, and realize Brayden has been playing with his graveyard on the wrong side. Thankfully, he fixes it. In his second main phase, Mike then casts an Orzhov Signet, and taps the Signet to help cast Knight's Whisper. He loses 2 and draws 2 cards, and then passes, sadly missing the trigger. Brion plays a Forest, and he casts Grave Pact, and at this point Mike realizes he's missed the Ludwig trigger. Brayden tells Brion he's okay with the enchantment, but to wait until after he's killed Kalatis to maximize on the archer's triggers. Brion isn't so sure about why Brayden's so okay with this, and he casts an Eternal Witness to bring back his Skull Clamp, which he then recasts. Moving to combat, Kai casts Harrow to save some time, and sacrifices the Glacial Fortress to find an island and a plains. Brion then swings the Eternal Witness at Mike for two. Moving to his end step, Brion then draws. Kai plays a Temple of Epiphany, which comes in tapped and scries one, shipping the card to the bottom. Siddhar Kondo then hits the field, making blocking, well, very difficult. Mike once again faces the ire of Kai, who swings Ludwig, the Protector, and the Fiend Hunter at Mike for four. Kai gains three counters on the repository, and passes, trying at the end of turn from Ludwig's trigger. Brayden plays a Loyal Apprentice in his main phase, and upticks to ready, discarding two and drawing two. We then see Toretti's favorite spell, Scrap Mastery, hit the stack, and no one has a way to stop it. The gang then swaps their artifacts on the field for those in the yard, and Mike and Brayden double check to see how Worm Coil would work. It does go to Brayden's yard, but because Mike controlled it, it doesn't get exiled, and Mike gains two Worm Tokens, one with Death Touch and one with Life Link, while Brian reminds everyone to lose one life from the Poison Tip Archer as the engine died. Brayden still has some triggers to resolve, and names Drew's repository with his Phyrexian Revoker as it enters the field. He then goes and grabs a basic with the Wellspring trigger, and Brayden then moves to combat. He gains a Thopter token from his little apprentice because Doretti's out. See, I didn't get this trigger confused this time. Keeping his word to Brian, Brayden swings the Tyrant at Mike, and kills Kalatis, which has the Archer deal 1 to all of Brian's opponents. Mike then takes 7, and Brayden passes, drawing from Ludovic's trigger at the end of turn. Mike plays a Swamp for turn, and moves to combat. He swings everything at Kai, who blocks the zombie with Siddhar, and one of the tokens with the bell ringer. With the tokens dying, Brion's opponents take 2, and Kai then takes 9 damage, while Mike gains 3. In his second main phase, Mike then casts Olivia, mobilized for war, and gains another vampire token from Edgar Markov before passing. Brion drops an abyssal gatekeeper in his main phase, really committing to the sacrifice plan. He then moves to combat, swinging the eternal witness and gatekeeper at Brayden, and the stinkweed imp and archer at Mike. Mike declares that he'll block the archer with Olivia, and Brayden blocks the gatekeeper with a thopter. With the blockers declared, Brion sacrifices the stingweed imp to Bantu. This has all of his opponents lose one life while he gains one, and he gets to scry the top card. They also take one as it dies from the archer, and this also triggers the grave pact. They then each have to sacrifice a creature, which triggers the archer three more times. Brion then sacrifices the gatekeeper to Bantu, 
draining his opponents for one and scrying one, and then forcing them to sacrifice two creatures this time, one from the Gatekeeper and one from the Pact. Briand also has to sacrifice a creature to the Gatekeeper, and Eternal Witness goes to his bin, adding another Poison Tip Archer Trigger to the stack. This is a total of 10 damage being dealt in this one round of sacrifices, and it pretty much kills Mike. Funny enough, there is now nothing blocking the archer to kill it, and with nothing else, Brian passes, drawing from Lidvik at the end of turn. Kai plays a pain land, and I gotta ask, who hurt you man? There's a bit of confusion over how many total creatures should have died, and Brian's opponents realize it should have been one more each. Kai then casts Sigarda, Heron's Grace in his main phase, and keeps his creatures back as blockers. Brayden plays a Buried Ruin as his land for turn, and down ticks to ready to swap the Wellspring for the Worm Coil again. He then grabs a basic mountain from his library, as the Wellspring goes to the graveyard, and he moves to combat. He gains a Thopter as he moves to combat, and swings a Worm Coil at Kai and the Tyrant at Brion. He deals 7 damage with the Tyrant trigger to the Archer, which has all of Brion's opponents sacrifice a creature as it dies. Kai exiles some cards from his graveyard to make humans to both sacrifice and block with, thanks to Sigarda, and Brayden gains 6 as his Worm Quill is blocked, while Brion takes 7 in the air. Brayden then passes, unfortunately forgetting about the Ludwig trigger. Brion plays a Swamp for his turn, and out comes a Merciless Executioner. Kai makes another human with Sigarda, while Brayden sacrifices his Worm Quill engine. Thankfully they don't take any damage this time from the pesky Archer, and they then sacrifice another creature, as Brion sacrifices the Merciless Executioner to its own ability, which also triggers the Grave Pact. Once all the sacrificing is resolved, Brion then casts a Zoni Thousand-Eyed, and gains a few insect tokens from Undergrowth. Moving to combat, Bantu, Izoni, and two insects go at Brayden, while three insect tokens go at Kai. Kai is only able to block one insect, while Brayden blocks Izoni with his lifelink warp coil token. Brayden gains three, but then still ends up losing three with the remainder of the damage going through, and Kai can't stop the two, dropping to two. With damage being done, and some of Brion's creatures dying, they also have to sacrifice some creatures to the Grave Pack triggers, and Brayden makes a goat and sacrifices it and the Worm Coil engine to the triggers, while Kai sacrifices the only thing he can, Sigarda. Kai untaps and casts a Lure in his main phase. He then passes, and at the end of turn, Brayden casts Chaos Warp on Grave Pact. Brion shuffles it in, and reveals a Mortuary Mire, getting to put it into play. Brion chooses to put Izoni on top of his library, and we then move to Brayden's turn. Brayden down ticks to ready in his main phase, and makes his Wayfarer bobble into yet another Worm Coil engine. He swings 14 damage at Brion, and the Revoker at Kai. Kai flashes in a Laboratory Maniac with the Lurin, but Brayden counters it with Red Elemental Blast. Responding to this, Kai pays to flash in Teferi, and with Teferi on the stack, Brayden flashes in Bogard and Hellkite, killing the 5 remaining insect tokens on Brion's side. The Labman is then countered, and Kai blocks the Revoker with Teferi, while Brion takes 14 in the air, and Brayden gains 6. Brion draws for turn, and resolves a Rise of the Dark Realms in his main phase. He gains a ton of creatures from the graveyards, and resolves his triggers, using Eternal Witness to bring back Skullclamp to his hand. With the Revoker trigger on the stack, Kai flashes in Ludvik using his Repository to pay for the Commander tax and Alurin. To no surprise, Brion names Druid's Repository. Brion then exiles Teferi with the Fiend Hunter. They then resolve the Merciless Executioner trigger, and Brion sacrifices his Stinkweed Imp. This means that there's three triggers from the Archer, which kills Kai as Brion is putting a plus one plus one counters from Masaryk onto his creatures. Brion then moves to combat, and he swings Bontu at Brayden, who decides not to block, and just takes the hit for seven. Brayden draws for turn, and sacrifices the Thopter token to his trading post to return Worm Quell Engine to his hand. This triggers Masaryk, making Brion's board even bigger. Brayden then recasts the Worm Quill Engine, and he swings everything at Brion, forgetting that Kai's crossroads is gone, but it doesn't make much of a difference. Before moving to blockers, Brion sacrifices his Dawn Treader Elk to its own ability, going to find a basic, and pumps his board by a further plus one plus one counter. He deals one to Brayden from the Archer trigger, and with his blockers now huge, easily blocks all of Brayden's creatures. Brayden realized that Brion's pretty much got the game in the bag, and the guides shake hands and thank each other for a good game. Game review time. So, unfortunately it seems like Mike missed the lifelink on the Tithe Drinker. It wouldn't have changed all that much since I think he and Kai would have died around the same time, but it is unfortunate. He got hated out very early on. Basically, as soon as he dropped the Captivating Vampire, followed by the Calatus, he was the public enemy number one. With the Captivating Vampire out, yes, it makes sense that he was the main threat because he was going to steal people's creatures, but what it did mean was that the Poison Tip Archer went unanswered for several turns. 
I'm also not too sure how I feel about Kai playing all of those shock lands early on, especially when he had the Carplusian Forest in his hand and potentially could have saved himself a little bit of life. I think like many people realized with the first game with Brayden, is that just because you can cast your commander on turn 1 doesn't mean you necessarily should. Brayden was still able to get Doretti out on turn 3, but with a much slower play and things like Ruby Medallion, he wasn't public enemy number 1. I think Brianna did a good job of navigating the table's politics, and also was able to keep a lot of Rattlesnake cards on his side of the field. It seemed like most of the game, no one really had enough spot removal to deal with the Poison Tip Archer, and the only person with a board wipe was Mike, and if he'd cast it, he would have certainly died to the Poison Tip Archer triggers. Brian is also the only other player who I've ever seen use Bantu other than Tony, so I have to give him two thumbs up for including the god in the deck. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash MTGMudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash MTGMudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.